Hi friends, we are back. Day three trial. Um, I believe that this is the second trial day, which means that if you recall from last time, uh, Phoenix was talking about how things were getting rushed in the court, uh, that there are only three days that were uh, allowed for a trial, and that um, kind of leads into the rest of the game here, that we only have three days to get our not guilty verdict. Um, and it kind of, it was an exposition of why that was. Uh, so here we are. I believe this will be the last part of this particular case. Um, let's get into it. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Uh, Phoenix, look! Prosecutor Edgeworth. I received a call from the public prosecutor's office yesterday. He told me that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how you try to attack his testimony, if I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What, does White have the judge in his pocket too? So you're saying I'm going to be guilty, end of story? I will do anything to get my verdict, Mr. Wright. Anything. Why? Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent. How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth. You've changed. I told you he knew him! Hmm? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix Wright. F Phoenix? Well, court will be opening for session soon. What? But wait! Your defense attorney isn't even here yet. He's not... I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are already quite clear to the court, today we will hear the testimony of another witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... it's like he already knows why. If anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Let's do it. We got... we need the defense. We need the ammo. Mr. Edgeworth, you owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify in the trial against Miss Maya Fay? Hm. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time, I thought that Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. <laughs> we all appreciate his demeanor. Great, he gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Hello, flashy smile. Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? 
already forget his voice, my goodness. Oh, nice rings. Uh, your name. Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, do my lo locutions confuse? He's gonna be really hard to read this entire time. Name! These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. I am the CEO, or, to use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim, Miss Mia Fey? That would be negatory! No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder? Correct! And you witnessed the murder from there. Ahem. Why tell you what you already know? Very well, Mr. White. You may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? Ho ho ho! I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Wow. Let him have it, Phoenix! Hey, look at that. We see Maya in the, uh, the sta- or uh, behind the desk with us where, where Mia used to be. Here we go. Let's see, it was about nine o'clock, I believe. I was quietly perusifying, oh, that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She, too, was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she... she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction, then it was all over. You know, I never really realized that her hair was so long. Hmm, if things occurred as you testify, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant. Er, uh, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor, and thank you for not putting the guilty verdict right there. Man. Yeesh. Alright, we have no problem with the time. Reading papers, I don't really care. He heard the noise, turned to look at the building across the way. This is the part that I have a problem with. Duh. Because I did not do this. He was the one who did this. None other than you. I called Ms. May over at once. She too was surprised. She ran away, but she gave chase. Okay, let's, let's start with pressing this. Spiky haired. Everybody has it against my hair. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Clearly, that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> I love, I love how insulted Phoenix gets when they they talk about his hair. Um. All right, let's talk about her running away. Can you be a little more detailed about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course, comprende. I understand. The victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to reflect this new detail. Yes, please do. Because this is the real point of pressing. You press, get a new statement, not an entire new testimony, just a new statement in the testimony. And now you can work with this. And it's either pressing it or presenting evidence. Which we have evidence to the contrary of this. I know it's been um, a while since the last part, but... There was one thing in Miss May's testimony that stuck. And that was that she ran to the right. Wait right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. I'm, I'm still trying to get his voice a little bit more masculine. <clears throat> what is this? You said the victim ran to the left. But that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. 
She clearly stated that the victim ran right. Oh, ho, ho. it is simple. You have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here, and the victim here. If the victim ran to the left as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Oh, hey! Look at you, desperate face! So soon, in the into the testimony. Very strange. Oh, he looks so normal, all of a sudden. I did see her run to the left, I did. Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run left. So he did witness the killing. Wait a second. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? They are both right. Both witnesses are telling the truth, for once. Ha! Huh, I doubt it. Oh, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? I almost called him Mr. White. <laughs> That's not confusing at all. Yes, what do you mean he was not viewing the crime from the hotel? If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law offices of Fay & Co., of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Show the court where Mr. White was standing! I love how obvious this is. You can do it with the touch screen to get it right on there. No room for doubt. This is where he was. Look! When the victim ran for the door, if he was watching from this point, to him it would appear that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Yeah, that's the point. Order! I will have order. Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? Perhaps Scallion! <laughs> you were so insistent that she ran to the left. You really shouldn't have been. You should have just... Went with the flow, man, if you really lie in here. The postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far fetched. Oh, he's back. Ho ho ho! You provide us with so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing? The hilarity of this moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, might I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck. You can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left. And then you hit her, savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see? You hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Hmm, that does seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness? Yes, I will be. You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. I love how he's like, Do you want to do this? Like, yeah. Okay, let's review our evidence, shall we? Because it has been a while. As always, we've got our attorney's badge. Here's the autopsy report. Here's our cell phone. Some sort of glass shards. Really 
haven't used those yet. The thinker? The wiretap? I don't think we have much use for that anymore. The receipt with Maya. His name. And the thing we just used. Got some floor plans. That's it. As we were. And then you hit her. That's what I saw. Okay, oh, let's see what it says about this. <clears throat> I didn't hit anyone. Now, now, Mr. Wright, there is no point hiding things from this court. I'm not hiding anything. The prosecution requests that the defense refrain from interrupting the testimony. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Why is he mad at me? She ran to the right. I can't deny that because the autopsy has been revised to say that she lived a little bit longer. Deliver the final look. Alright, let's see. Stop saying it was me! But it was you! Mr. Wright, if you claim that it was not you, then show us proof. Mm, can I do nothing right? Nothing! May I continue? It's May saw. You see, you hit her twice. So, were you watching both times? I suppose I was. And please excuse me for not testifying to this sooner. What do you think, Phoenix? I think we've got him right where we want him. He slipped. Let him laugh for now. I'll soon wipe that smile off his face. Okay, so it is ready for me to present. I wasn't sure. Mr. White. The victim died from a single blow. What do you have to say to that? Okay, I thought that he... I'd need to... Further it, but... I do not remember this part of the case. I don't remember fighting... I don't remember fighting Red White. I just remember getting him on the stand. I do remember the left and right discrepancy, though. Uh -huh. Now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court that you were absolutely perfect? Hmm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a ten minute break. Yes, yes, quite. The witness is confused because he's lying. I emphatically request that there be no break, Your Honor. Yeah, we want justice! Don't let him get away! Wow, crowd's with me. That's nice. Very well, if the witness would care to revise his testimony. The crowd's on my side! No slipping out of this one now, White. Mr. White. Okay. Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. Then the next moment, I saw Miss Mia run to the left. The killer, you, attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then she turned and ran to the door. Then you did her in with the single blow. Thwap. Hmm, thwap indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. One can only hope. Okay. He is grasping. Let's be specific. What did you hear fall? You heard that thing fall? What exactly was that thing? Oh, that! Um, well, the glass light stand. Right, the one that had fallen over at the scene. Phoenix, doesn't something about that strike you as odd? Always say yes. Roll of improv, right? Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. Ru White! Wow. I'm. can't wait till this case is over. <laughs> huh? What? You're saying you saw the glass light stand? 
Yes. Then change your testimony to reflect that. S sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. The light stand was lying on the floor when I looked. Let me see if I have to press this further or if I have to just present stuff. The last stand was lying on the floor. That's the first I've heard of this. Why didn't you tell us about the stand before? Why? Me? Well, oh, I was instructed not to- Wait! One moment. Give me a minute to gather my thoughts. I am so, so confused. White's falling apart. Your honor, please, I ask that you do not allow the witness to be badgered any further. M Mr. Bright, please refrain from badgering the witness. Yes, your honor. Edward is on the ropes. Very well, the witness may continue his account. Okay, he was told not to, uh... Okay, and all this stuff is... It's just a lie. This is the thing that's the problem. Now, I believe that the thing that I have to show... Is this... Yes. Yes. Objection! There it is. Mr. White? It was impossible for you to have seen the glass stand. What? Look at this. You saw the floor plans for the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well, note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White. What do you have to say to that? Um, uh, <laughs> Ridiculosity. Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel, as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell, either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards to glass light stand. So when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell. And the only place you could have seen that from is inside the Fay Law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. I think the sound effects of the game do very well with the breaking of the witnesses, so I didn't say the gah part. M Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I. Miss Mia. Looks like we're about to get our verdict. Objection! Edgeworth! That's far enough, Phoenix Wright. Ooh, the pursuit music is up. What? <laughs> I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now? Hmm? What? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo... Confess that you replaced the wiretap. The wiretap! Order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court, Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Court. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Pay. What does that have to do, Your Honor? The question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office, and by who? No, you wouldn't. Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Fay's office. Am I correct? C correct You are most correct, Miles. Wow, he's on a first-name basis. Give me a break! 
Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached a faint pool of offices. That's when I saw that accursed light stand. Now I'm confused. Please explain to the court what all this means, Mr. Edgeworth. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand, at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like you to believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been to the office well before the murder took place. He went to place the wiretap. He could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed for the baseless conjecture it is. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretap. Ahem, <clears throat> leave it to me. Maybe I will need that wiretap after all. I feel faint. <sighs> of course it wouldn't have been that easy. It's only been 25 minutes or so. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fay and Co. law offices. Of course I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Hmm, so now I have to prove that it wasn't there in September? So you saw the stand before the night of the incident, and this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over by the sound. Correct! That is right. I see. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine. Yeah, what am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. Murder. Thank the law offices. That's actually... Okay. I think this is... Do you have proof? Miss April May knew the details of Miss Faye's co phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Right. Okay, that's not the problem. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That's when I saw this glass light stand. There's nothing there for me to press him on. Well, maybe he's rattled enough that I can bluff something out of him. Okay, so I do need to press. Let's just press. Keep pressing on. Was it really you that went to the office? Or was it Miss May? Unidentified fingerprints several days old were found in the Fayetteco Law Offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. If I know Edgeworth, he's already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the Fayetteco Law Offices. Done so to place the wiretap. Press, press, press! Why did you tap me as phone? In later games, I just like press every single statement just to get a little bit more whatever I need to. So this is this is a good uh, look into that sort of thing. This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. That's when I saw this glass light stand. Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a beautious thing to reserve his attention, does it not? That is all. There's nothing there for me to press him on. It's hard enough that I can bluff something out of him. Did I not press everything? Don't tell me I've run out of ammo. I've run out of ammo. I'm afraid that's as far as you go, Mr. Wright. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright? Are you giving up? Yes, Your Honor. Phoenix! Phoenix, over here! I know that voice. M Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. M Mia? Whoa. <laughs> I think I just passed out. 
Where, where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? You saw a ghost. <laughs> oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Gah! Oh, you're finally awake. Gah! <laughs> Maybe you just, like, ease into things. <laughs> hey, Phoenix! Gak? That's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. A little more closely, maybe. There she is. You're... Maya? Didn't you know that the Fey women have strong psychic powers? When you accepted your defeat in court, it appears that was enough of a shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So Maya is channeling you, Mia. That's right. I am Maya, but I'm also Mia. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's what I came here to tell you. But... We don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have that receipt in the court record, right? Um, uh, yeah. The one you wrote Maya on. Phoenix. White wrote that, not me. So... So what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The front? It's a regular receipt. It looks like it's from a famous department sh store. $1,000. Wow, big spender. Item. Glass light stand. Date of purchase, September 4th. September 4th. That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa. Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go. I think the court is about to reconvene. I'm sorry, I think Nick Phoenix said that last one. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. Receipt updated. Let's do it. And, uh, that is the... Uh, that's Maya's power there with the, uh, with the spirit medium stuff. She can channel Mia. <laughs> because, sure. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is the defendant, rather, are you alright, Mr. Wright? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. Wright is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Your Honor, please give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. But as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an opinion on this matter? I say, let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. Thank you, Edgeworth. You may begin your cross-examination. Okay, we already know what we're presenting and when. Unless it totally just... Really... There it is, okay. <laughs> Look closely at this, which we never actually did. Receipt for a glass light stand. The date of purchase is the day before the murder. There we go. See the word Maya written in blood? Haha! <laughs> You're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The other side. Your Honor! Would you tell the court what's written on the other side of that receipt? Hmm. Well, a glass light stand. And the date of purchase? Why? That's the day before the murder! You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Fay and Co. Law offices at the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Qua? Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? 
No, it's impossible. Uh-oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you'll agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then that is all for the trial of... Objection! What do you want, Edgeworth? Not so fast, Phoenix writes. Eh, what? No way can he worm his way out of this one. Oh wait, I forgot. It's Edgeworth. There is a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Oh, come on! Ergo! I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Mm -hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. OBJECTION! Mr. White's guilt is obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? If anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it will be me, the prosecution. I need a day to ascertain whether your claims have any basis on factual evidence. Hmm. I see. OBJECTION DENIED. WHAT?! So... The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. So this wasn't the last part. There's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sure to come up with or just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me and all. Ah, you. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course, thank you for your time. That is ridiculous, he should be held somewhere. The witness will stay. Mia? Phoenix, read this note out loud. Mia, what is this? Your Honor, if I may. You're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. You bet I am. My life is riding on this one. A list of people's names in Mia's handwriting. Alright. I have something that I would like to read to the court. Let's do it. Take that! The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. S stop! Desist! Halt! P please stop! Make him stop! How... how did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt right here, right now, or else this list will be released to the press. Hmm, using, uh, getting a taste of his own medicine there. Using his own tr tricks against him. I, I confess. I confess. I, I did it. I hit her. I hit Miss Mia with the thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. Well, I see no reason for to continue this trial. Okay, I was like, wait a second, there's no way there's another day of this. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again. That was quite a spirited defense. Well, I was defending myself. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I guess you could say that. If only you knew how spirited it was. Uh huh. Hmm. Well, this court finds the defense. Um, rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, and Ms. Maya Fay, for good measure. Not guilty. Yay! That is all. The court is adjourned. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this again. But congratulations! You're lucky I was born a fay. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me, and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you 
live. My time here is running out. Hmm? My powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. What? No! There's still so much to say! Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Ch chief <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix, can you come to the office tonight, say nine o'clock? The office? I'll see you later. Chief, Mia! Ah, he's late. Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came! Mia? I was kind of worried you might not. Of course I came. Well then. I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? M Mia? <laughs> you should see your face! Mia? What are you talking about? It's me, Maya! Maya? What? Did I look like my sister? Look like you were her. Hmm, I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Oh, um, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See, Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of, huh? She means the office, this office. Someone has to help with a new Wright and Co. law offices, right? And who better but me, Maya Faye, reporting for duty. Wait, no. On second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick! Maya here, ready to get down to business. You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name. Mia said that's what your friend Larry calls you. Nick? You know what this means. We're partners! And, uh, and that's why I said that he was going to be called Nick a lot. <laughs> you know, when I think about it, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. But... If it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Right and co law offices. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Aw. I love that picture. Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here, watching. Right! Okay, Nick, let's do it! Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy! Burgers! She loves burgers. She's obsessed with burgers. She always talks about burgers. There's a great burger joint do just down the street! Come on! Time's a-wasting! Uh, okay, wait up. The end. Case closed. And a new episode has been added, Turnabout Samurai, which is a, um, it's a fun one. So, definitely tune in for that. I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna go back and, uh, show the art. Here we are. So, we've closed the case. Turnabout Sisters is done. Um... Like I said, I was shocked that it showed you who did it at the beginning. Um, it is That is not something that usually happens. I think it happens on one of the game's, like, quote-unquote tutorial cases. Because uh, it's, it's kind of a tutorial because it's the first case of the game. But also, since the game is a series, it's kind of... I mean, you don't really need it because you've played the games before. But anyway, it shows you who did it on one of the other tutorial cases. But... Other than that, it's a complete mystery. Uh, you can have your suspicions. You can have your suspects. There are things that happen uh, that you discover as you go along with the investigations and with the um, court case. But in the end, uh, you'll catch your guy or girl, whichever the case. <laughs> but anyway... That was Turnabout Sisters, episode two, which it was actually, what, what is this, episode five of the series, because uh, of all the parts. So, closing remarks. Um, I, I, I liked this case. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, mainly because of that, intro those introductions to the new 
characters and that I've <laughs> really haven't seen those in a while. Um, it was simple. Uh, only three real witnesses and the detective. The um, it, it really worked well for a uh, level two, as it were, for a video game. Um, it built up upon what you learned in the last case, and it's still teaching you a little bit. And I think as we go on into the third case, it's going to be uh, a little bit more... It's it's on you. You're, it's up to you now. You've learned your stuff. You know how to do investigations. You know how to do the courtroom. You know to press for that information, to get some more information, to present on evidence that... Or for testimonies that don't quite... Uh, match up with evidence and overall um, it was it was a good level two for teaching uh, how to play um, and yeah the characters are great it gives a good little introduction that's how Maya becomes your assistant um, and she's going to be sticking with us for a while and uh, as much as I you know I didn't play it because I was mourning the loss of Mia. I didn't want to really relive that. Um, but she's still kind of there with us, uh, in spirit in more ways than one. Um, so that's really all I have to say about this one. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of, I mean, it's not, there's nothing like ex extremely amazing about this case that I'm like, oh my goodness, I love this for this reason. Like, it was it was good. It wasn't bad. Uh, I still say it's um, ranked above those ones I've I've mentioned that there are some cases that I like more than others, um, that I that I want to play less than others. Um, but yeah, no, overall, it was a good it was a good case. So I guess with that, um, we're gonna end it here. Tune in next time to start episode three, Turnabout Samurai. We'll meet some fun. Uh, some more fun characters, some more punny names. Um, I guess this time's punny names was Red, White, and Blue, and then April, May would be, you know, like the months, April, May. Um, but yeah. So, hope you've enjoyed. Hope you are enjoying. And talk to you guys later.